Hi everyone, and welcome to this chapter of the Freefall Stack Course. In this chapter, we're going to install PyEnv on macOS. In order to install PyEnv on macOS, in my opinion, the easiest way to do that is using Homebrew. Homebrew is kind of like a dependency management system for macOS. It's an alternative way of doing that. You may not have used Homebrew before, but if you're a developer that's using macOS as the main platform for development, you're already probably familiar with Homebrew and you may also have it already installed on your computer. So if you already have that, you don't have to do the installation for Homebrew in this chapter, but you may just need to go through with the installation of PyEnv. As my terminal, uh, throughout this course on macOS, I will be using iTerm2, and I'll also be using OhMyZSH as my shell. So the default terminal application on macOS is completely fine. However, I found out that iTerm2 gives you a lot more in terms of, for instance, auto completion and profiles and colors and themes and etc. So if you're following along with this course on macOS, I highly suggest that you follow the current steps that I'm going to give you for installing iTerm2 as your terminal and also OhMyZSH as your shell so that you can follow along with the steps with the rest of the steps that have to do with macOS throughout this chapter and throughout this course without deviating so much from my setup, who's basically the instructor and telling you all the steps that you need to take. So you're more than welcome to just follow along and use terminal, but I highly suggest that you use iTerm2 and OhMyZSH as your shell. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. So I'll do some screen reshuffling in here so we see my screen better. Then I'll bring Safari up here so we all see it. So if I maximize this, you can see here we have the website for iTerm2, which is basically an alternative terminal for Mac OS. It gives you a lot of advantages. I mean, I can't, I can't go through all of them, but you can. it's probably better that you go through all the features that are in iTerm2. So uh, what I suggest then is as soon as you open iTerm2.com, go into and press the download button and you will download iTerm2 and this is just an application. Then you'll have to drag and drop this application into your applications folder. So after you've done that, then you'll, if I bring up the applications folder here, you'll see that iTerm2 will be an application available to you right here. I wish I could actually maximize this so you see it better, but this is the, I mean, macOS doesn't have global accessibility settings for font size, unfortunately. So that's the best that we can do. After having iTerm2 installed, you need to just open iTerm2 as an application and move it to applications folder. And then it says, okay, I need to update. Then we say yes. And in here, we can see that, I mean, for me, I'm using oh, my ZSH as my shell. And that's the reason that we're seeing this in here. But for you, when you open iTerm2, after you install it, you won't see this prompt. You'll probably just see a screen that looks like this. Okay. That's for iTerm2. Then as the default shell, instead of just using bash, I suggest highly that you just search in Google for oh, my ZSH, and you'll end up on this website. Then you need to press on the install oh, my ZSH, and then you'll get this curl command in here, you'll see. And it will tell you install oh, my ZSH via curl, and that's what we're going to do. So if you just put that command in your terminal, and it says, well, yes, basically for me, it looks like I already have all my ZSH, so I don't basically I can't install it again. So if you if you just open iTerm2 and then paste that command in here, you'll you should be able to install all my ZSH on your on your terminal. After having that, then you well, all you'll see basically is iTerm2 with its default settings, and uh, you will have all my ZSH as your terminal. So you will end up with a very simple terminal, as you can see in here. And one of the things I really like about um, iTerm2 is all these tabs that you can create, like these windows that you can create like this. So you can create columns, uh, I believe, with that's that one. I don't remember exactly how we created columns, but it was one of these commands at least. But you can see in, internally, you can create these um, windows that you don't have to have separate tabs for. So normally when you have a terminal on Mac OS, you have to create new tabs in order to work with a separate shell. However, with iTerm2, you can create just columns and 
um, you can create columns and rows, as I just showed you. So this, these are the rows. And I believe one of these commands in here, you could also create new columns, which I don't really remember how to. It was one of the shortcuts. So, but that's not the point. The point is having iterm2 and omyzsh as your terminal and as your shell. Good stuff. After doing that, after installing iterm2 and omyzsh, we need to move on to installing Homebrew. So let's go ahead in here and see how we can take care of that. Um, if we go to brew.sh, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, here's the homepage for Homebrew. And then you'll have to just copy this command. As you can see in here, just press the copy button and paste it in your terminal in order to install Homebrew. I've already done that. So if I type brew, I already know that brew is installed. But for those of you who don't have Homebrew, after continuing continue with this command and completing it, you should have access to a command that is called brew in your terminal, in your iTerm, hopefully, after installing it, OK? So that's really good. After installing Homebrew, what we need to do is to use Homebrew in order to install PyEnv. So what you'll need to do, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, is to issue the command brew update. And then after doing, maybe, maybe I should increase the size as well so we see it better. So brew update, that's the first command that you need to issue. And then you'll have to say brew install pyam, OK? After doing that on your Mac OS, you should have access to a command that is called pyam. So if I say which pyam in here, it was gigantic font. So you can see in here that you'll see pyam is just a function in here, OK? So if you type then pyam, you should have access to some of the commands that pyam brings with itself. So if I increase the size of this, you can see here are some of the commands that pyam gives me on my host operating system, which is Mac OS in here, OK? Now, one of the tricky things about PyEnv and installing PyEnv on Mac OS, and actually, I think on all three host platforms that we're going to install PyEnv on, we have to do some hacks, actually, to get it to work in the way that it was designed to. I don't know if using hacks is the right word, but as part of the installation of PyEnv, we have to do some additional work in order to ensure that the host operating system completely understands what PyEnv is and what it is trying to do. So let's go in here and open up the GitHub repository for PyEnv. And I'm going to do that right here. And I've already opened that, as you can see, PyEnv. OK. So if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the installation part in here. And you can see it says installing getting PyEnv with Homebrew on Mac OS. OK. If you go here, you can see basically the steps that I've provided for you is, are provided here as well, brew update and install PyEnv. And if we just continue with this, I can see some part in here. Let's have a look in here. There we go. So we have four ZSH, as you can see in here, OK? So these commands need to be provided in your terminal if you're trying to install PyEnv on oh my ZSH, for instance, in iTerm2. So if you have normal bash, and if you didn't, for instance, install iTerm with oh my ZSH, then you have to follow along with these steps. As you can see in here, it says use bash, bash RC. But if you have uh, oh my ZSH, then you have to issue these commands in your terminal. So now, if I bring up my terminal in here, let's also increase the size of the font in here. And remember, here we have oh my ZSH, and the script, the shell script, the startup script for oh my ZSH is inside the root folder or the home folder, actually, inside a file inside a file called ZSHRC. So if I say cat in here, cat, oops. Uh, ZSHRC in here, you can see that this is my uh, ZSHRC file. And you can see at the bottom of this file, there's no mention of anything that has to do with um, PyEnv. And that's what we need to do right now and install PyEnv basically into our shell. Let's copy the first line of text in here for ZSH, as you can see in here. I'm going to paste it right there. And I'm going to take the second line and paste it right there. And I'm going to also take the third line and paste it right here. After doing these, if we cat our ZSHRC file, we'll see these three commands added to the end of our ZSHRC file. OK? After doing that, I highly suggest that you actually completely quit your shell and your terminal. In this case, I'm just going to press Command-Q on my Mac, and then I'm going to bring iTerm2 back up again. After doing that, if you just type pyamp, you should completely have access to pyamp without a problem. 
if after doing all of this, pyamp is still not a recognized command, you may have missed one or more steps throughout this chapter. If that is the case, please do let me know in the comments on this video. I'll do my best to help you out, and I'm sure some other members of the community will also be glad to help you out with the installation of PyAmp on your Mac OS. So by just issuing the PyAmp command in terminal, you can be sure that PyAmp is installed actually on your computer correctly on Mac OS. So PyAmp installation on Mac OS is quite straightforward. Uh, it is a little bit more um, difficult to install PyAmp on Windows, and that's some it, I have a dedicated chapter for that for those of you who are who are on Windows because we have to use a specific fork of PyEnv for Windows, but we're going to figure that out as well. But if you're a Mac OS user, as long as you have access to PyEnv, you should be good to go. In that, we should then later in the later chapters when we start installing Python on Mac OS, you shouldn't have any problems with that. But if any problems arise, please do let me know as well. So. Once we have PyM installed uh, on our computers on Mac OS specifically for this chapter, uh, we should then be able to go ahead and install Python and IPython and then pip, of course, as well. That comes with installation of Python using PyEnv. So hopefully you could go through with this chapter without a problem. And again, if there's any problems with this chapter, do let me know in the comments below. So I hope to see you in the next chapter. And until then, have a great day.